Hey everyone, I'm going to be talking about classes and objects in this lecture. The topic is on how to design classes and then how to create objects of the given class so you can actually use it. Now the first thing is, just like you have different data types like integers, double, boolean, etc. You now have classes. And a class can be like a rectangle or a person class or a polygon class. Polygons as in triangles and squares and pentagons and heptagons and so on and so forth. So, so a class is similar to a data type. Similarly, just like you have variables of these data types, for example, if you have an, a variable x, which is of type int, you have an object. So you can say it is a rectangle object r or a person object John or a polygon object triangle. So in that sense an object is like a variable with some basic differences. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how you design a class. To design a class or what are the contenders for a class? So if there's something that can be represented by a single number or by a single string or by a single character is typically not considered a class. For example, the age of a person. The age of a person can be represented by using a simple int and therefore it's not a class. Now, name of a person. Although, yes, you can represent the name of a person using a single string, for example, Gaurav Gupta, storing the name of a person as a class has some advantages because you can, you can store the first name, the last name, and all other names in between separately. So we're going to talk about that a bit later, but let's consider a rectangle. And just for the sake of simplicity, we'll consider a simple rectangle which only has some height and similarly some width. So a simple rectangle is described by how wide it is and how high it is. We describe this using what we call a class diagram that your class rectangle has two attributes width and height. Now the type of these attributes themselves because a rectangle can have a width of 1.5 and a height of 2.6 for example we'll keep them as double. Now, once we know that the rectangle has a certain width and height, we can actually compute some values on this rectangle, for example, the diagonal or the area. So you can have the area of that rectangle. So we say that area is a method that is computed using the instance variables. It returns a double value. Similarly, I can check if the square, if the rectangle is a square or not. Now it's either a square or it's not a square. So that's a Boolean value. So that's how you design, define I'm sorry, that's how you design a class 
and next we'll see how you implement this class in Java. So I'm going to create a new Java project and call it classes objects video. Inside that I'm going to create a new class and name it rectangle. You can see that it creates a public class rectangle and in the curly brackets I can have the body. There are two parts of a class. One, are, one is instance variables and the other is instance methods. As we saw, the two instance variables we have are width and height and they are both of type double. Similarly, the instance method that we have is area and it returns the product of width and height of whichever object it's called on. Similarly, we have boolean is it is square and we return true or false depending on whether width equals height. So width is the same as height, we return true, otherwise we return false. Now what we have done is we've defined a data type in this class. If you expand rectangle.java it says rectangle and the C means that it's a class. It has width and height as instance variables, area and is square as instance methods. And you can see that it's a really nice way in which it represents these methods. It says area colon double means area returns a double value. Now once we have the data type, we need to create variables. And to create variables, we will create a client code containing public static void main, which means that the program can execute. Now, our, our primitive data type, like an integer variable, is created like this. And our object will similarly be created by saying rectangle r. If you try to display the value of the integer variable x, it will give an error because it's possible that the variable was not initialized. So when I run this, I will get a compilation error. Similarly, if you try to display the object R, you will get a compilation error. So the way objects are created is slightly different from primitive data types. To create an object, you have to say class name, object name equals new class name round brackets. So this creates an object and reserves memory for the instance variables. I'll explain more about that in a little while. But when you display this, well, for the first thing, we don't want to display the R directly. Since we know that every rectangle has a width and every rectangle has a height, it's that value that we want to display. And you can access the instance variable of an object using the dot operator. And in that sense, most of the IDs are pretty fantastic because as soon as I say R dot, it tells you what can you access. So I can access width, I can access height, I can access area, I can access is square. So let's just display width and also display height. So you can think of the dot operator like the human apostrophe s. So when I say John's height, the same thing in programming is whatever your object is, John dot height. Or if I say um, chips price. That translates to chips dot price. So I'm going to write something similar over here, which is r dot width, which means r's width and r dot height, 
which is r's height. So we run this and you can see the values are 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.0. Width is this, height is this. And you can see the output in the console. So before we display the value, I can assign it a value. So we can say r dot width is 2.4 and r dot height is 3.1. Now when I run this, the values are 2.4 and 3.1. Now the next thing I'm going to try and do is to explain how this object is actually stored in the memory. And to do this, I'm going to enter the debug mode by placing breakpoints and running the program in the debug perspective. So when we are on line six, before line six executes, you can see in the section variables, the only variable is ARGS, which is the parameter to the main method. When I resume, it's going to execute line six, and it creates an object R in the memory and when I expand that, it has a width and a height whose values are 0, 0.0. In the memory physically, what happens is there is an object R and new rectangle creates the memory for the instance variables at some other place. There are two instance variables. One is width and the other is height. They are initialized to the default value based on the data type. And when I say rectangle R equals, it means R refers to that block of memory. So we say that R is a reference. And that's a really important term for you to remember, that an object is a reference. And it refers to the instance variables, or it refers to the location where the instance variables are stored. Now when I resume it again, r dot width becomes 2.4 and height becomes 3.1 and I can display these values. So that's what happens when you create an object. In the next video we're going to talk about getters and setters. Thank you.